Hi there. Welcome to Stories That Made Us. Today, we tell tales of the Shikarilla and the Lipans, the White Mountain and the Chiricahua. These are the Native American Apache tribes who reside in the southwestern United States. The Shikarilla tribe story is the first of the episode. The tribe is named after the Spanish word meaning little basket. The Shikarilla people lived a peaceful and semi-nomadic life, making the plains of southern Colorado and northeastern New Mexico their home. They migrated from the north in early times and are excellent hunters, farmers and gatherers. Given their nomadic history, it is unsurprising that their story features the migration of the peoples. So then, this is the Shikarilla story of our origin. The universe was nothing but a great void. There was no earth and no living beings. Darkness, water, chaos and wind comprised the universe. There were no humans, only the Haxen, the great spirits. The Haxen made the earth, they made the underworld beneath it and the sky above. The earth they fashioned as a woman and the sky a man. All creation, including the great Haxen, lived in the underworld. This was a land where darkness prevailed. This realm was much like the earth, for there were mountains and trees, rivers and seas. The world, though, was bereft of creation. There were no animals or humans. Everything in the underworld existed in a wondrous dreamlike state, a state that was spiritual and holy. The great Haxen, however, were lonely. The spirits desired companions and creatures. Black Haxen, one of the most powerful of the great spirits, made the first animal with clay. He gave it four feet and a long tail. At first, the animal looked and behaved awkwardly. Black Haxen perfected this animal until it walked with grace and looked at the spirit with compassionate, loving eyes. The spirit saw this and decided that it was good. This is how the first animal came to be. Black Haxen then pitied the poor creature, for it was lonely. He thus wished to make other kinds of animals. These animals came from the body of the first. Black Haxen was happy. Spying his creatures filled his heart with joy. He had never thought to find such diversity among animals. He then divided food amongst these animals so that all may have plenty. He gave grass to the horse, sheep and cow. To others, he gave bushes, leaves and pine needles. Some he let hunt other animals. All this was part of his plan, a plan to ensure balance and stability. He then sent some animals to live and graze in the Great Plains. Others he ordered to the mountains and the deserts. This is why animals are bountiful no matter where we are. The great black Haxen then held out his hand and caught a drop of rain. He mixed this water with some mud and fashioned a beautiful bird with lovely plumage. He was satisfied with its elegance and grace. 
He then thought that the bird would be lonely too. So he grabbed it by its tail and swung it rapidly. As the bird became dizzy, it imagined all sorts of other birds. Black Haxon made those images a reality. When he stopped whirling the poor bird, there were many new species of the creature. The Great Spirit made all the birds fly, for they were created from a drop of water that came from the air. He then sent the birds out to find places where they liked to live and settle. To feed these lovely birds, he dispersed seeds all over the ground. To tease the birds, the spirit turned some seeds to insects. He watched with amusement as the birds chased these tiny insects. Black Haxon then made moss upon the river banks and created fish and frogs. Now, as some birds flew, their feathers fell in the water. From these feathers came ducks, swans, and other water-dwelling birds. Similarly, from the feathers that fell on the land were fashioned the land-dwelling birds. Black Haxon thought that his creation was complete, but he wished to hear the opinion of animals and birds. He thus asked them if anything was lacking. This was the time when all birds and animals could speak. They had a common language and were conversant with one another. They held a grand council of all animals and birds to ponder over the Great Spirit's question. Giving it much thought and consideration, the animals returned to Black Haxon. They asked for a new companion, one who would be their guardian. They were concerned that if Black Haxon left, there would be none to look after and provide for them. Understanding their need for protection and guardianship, Black Haxon agreed. He said, you are correct, my little friends, for it is true that you need one to look after and care for you. Go forth to your lands, to your homes, and bring me things that you treasure the most. It is through these treasures that I will fashion your protector so that he will be bound to be your guardian. The animals and birds brought him all sorts of treasures from their lands. With these, Black Haxon created an outline of the first man. The turquoise that the animals brought, he turned to veins, and the red ochre to blood. The coral was shaped as the skin, while the white rock became bones. The Mexican opal became fingernails and teeth. The pupil was made from jets and the whites of the eyes from abalone. The bone marrow he constructed from white clay. Finally, Black Haxon used a dark cloud to make hair. This is how the first man was made but he was lying on the ground, face down. Animals watched with much excitement and anticipation as the man rose. He first knelt and then sat up. Finally, the man stood. Four times the black Haxon asked him to speak and he did so flawlessly. Four times the Great Spirit asked him to laugh and shout. The man complied. The Spirit then taught him to walk and run and gave him the knowledge of food and water. The birds and animals were very happy with man and their part in its creation.
Much like the black haxen, they were concerned that man would be lonely. So they asked the spirit to give him company. After a quick thought, the great one asked for some lice, which he then put on the man's head. The poor man went to bed that night, scratching his head. In his sleep, he dreamed of a woman. When he awoke, there she was, beautiful and resplendent. The first man and woman asked the great spirit where they would live. He told them that the world was theirs. They could live anywhere on the earth, anywhere they felt to be their home. This is why the Shikarila migrate from place to place. As time went by, the primeval man and woman, ancestors to us all, had children. And so, the people multiplied. But in those days, all were immortal. No one died. All creation was in the underworld, a world of perpetual darkness. This lack of light annoyed Holy Boy, who was another revered spirit. He tried many times to make the sun, but could not succeed. One day, he overheard that the white Haxen already had a son. So off went Holy Boy to meet white Haxen. He requested the sun for the underworld. Holy Boy then went to Black Haxen, who gave him the moon. Black Haxen then took a buckskin. Upon it, he taught Holy Boy the art of making the sacred drawing, one that would hold the sun and the moon in the sky. After this, the spirits all convened. Holy Boy, Red Boy, Black Haxen and White Haxen all performed the sacred ceremony. Then, White Haxen released the sun and Black Haxen let go of the moon. The world grew brighter as the two celestial bodies moved from north to south. They lit up the underworld as they light up the skies over our earth today. The people, birds and animals were utterly confused by this new creation. They had no idea what the sun or the moon was, and were awed when they lit for the first time. The shamans and mystics began to claim that it was their magic that created the earth. They said that they had power over these great givers of light. This did not sit well with White Haxen, who then created an eclipse on the fourth day. After the sun disappeared, the Haxen told the shamans to make it reappear in the sky. The men of magic tried all kinds of tricks and illusions, but there was no way they could bring light back to the world. After shaming the shamans, White Haxen turned his thoughts to creation. He commanded the animals, birds, and all people to bring him the food they ate. This they did. With these offerings, the spirit made a mountain, one that grew so tall that it almost reached the underworld sky. It did, however, fall short of punching a hole in the sky. When the spirits went up the mountain to check, they could only see the surface of the earth, but could not climb up. The Haxen then sent a housefly and a spider to scour around and find the things needed to build a ladder. They returned with four rays of sunshine. 
The great spirits took the race and built a ladder to the upper world. The spider was the first to climb up to the surface. Then came the great spirits, White Haxen, Black Haxen, Holy Boy and Red Boy. They found the earth covered with water. Seeing this, the spirits sent four winds to blow the water away. They tasked the beaver to come up and build dams to hold the water in place. Thus surfaced land upon the earth. The Haxen then asked the spiders to make threads to catch the sun and the moon. They pulled the celestial bodies out from the underworld and to the earth's sky. They made the sun go from east to west. The Haxen then called the people to climb up, and for four days they climbed the mountain. Upon reaching the summit, they found the ladders made from the sun's rays. It was the ancestral man and the ancestral woman who scaled the ladder first. They were the first to emerge upon the surface. Then came the animals and the birds. All left the underworld for greener pastures up in the earth. Upon reaching the earth, they all looked around. They found their habitats and were happy. Now, behind all the birds and animals, was an old couple. The underworld was all they had known. They thus had no intention of leaving the land where they were born, where they grew up and lived their lives in. They refused to come up. They decided to stay back in the underworld. The people told the old couple that they would come to visit them this is why we go to the underworld after death. Upon coming to the earth, all creatures lived together at first, but the Haxen wished for them to settle all over the world. To achieve this, they gave us different languages and voices. People and animals could no longer speak and communicate with each other. They thus decided to move. Different groups of people became tribes and they broke off. Some chose to stay behind, while others decided to journey across the earth. While all groups dispersed, there was only one that continued traveling clockwise. They reached the center of the world. These people are the Shikarila Apaches. And that is the end of their tale. We now move on to the Lipan Apaches. They are the natives of southwestern United States, mostly Texas, New Mexico, and Arizona. The name Lipan is a Spanish adaptation of their name Lepai Inde meaning the light grey people. They too migrated from the north, out of Canada and south to the States. Their story begins with a grand emergency council, a council that was represented by all, all that mattered. There were leaders of trees, animals and humans. There is another world, grunted the tree leader, a world that is bright and nurturing, a world where there is light. All creation could talk and understand one another. They spoke a common language. Life was underground back then and was dark and dreary. Stories. Only rumors and whispers 
spoke of a land above, one with light and water. There has to be someone we can choose, said the leader of men, one who would investigate these rumors. How about the wind, suggested the animal. The leaders thus mulled over the suggestion and agreed. The wind was strong and could travel quickly. When asked by the leaders to scout the rumors, he agreed. To travel to the upper world, the wind dug a tunnel by creating a powerful whirlwind. When he dug the hole deep enough, water gushed in through this hole. The earth was nothing but a giant mass of water. Wind tore through this water and came ashore. There, he blew across the water, forcing it to one side and exposing the underlined land on the other. This land, however, was swampy and muddy. The wind formed a gentle breeze that dried out all the land. Thus, having found both land and water, he reported back to the council. Have your people come up, he told the leaders. It is as the rumors were. There is land and there is water in this world above. The councilmen, however, were not convinced. They wished to investigate further. They tasked the crow to go to the earth and report back with all it saw. The crow, fascinated by this opportunity, agreed immediately. The bird flew to the surface, and there he saw that the land was white and dry. When he was about to return to inform the council of his findings, the crow came across some dead fish. He started to eat the dead fish and forgot all about the waiting councilmen in the lower world. After some time, the council resigned to the fact that the crow was not coming back. They then proposed that the beaver should be sent to investigate the new world. Now, the leaders knew that the beaver was a hard worker, so they agreed that it should go next. When beaver got to the surface, it followed a beach. Eventually, it found a gushing stream. Trees scattered its banks on both sides. The beaver realized that here it could build a good home. And so, it began working on building a dam straight away. Just like the crow, it forgot all about reporting back to the underworld. After some time, the councilman realized that the beaver was not coming back either. They next chose to send the badger, for they knew that the animal was very clever. When badger got to the surface, it saw lots of dry land copious water and plenty of light. It knew immediately that this was a good place for all the people in the lower world. It ran back and informed the councilman of its findings. So this is how the leaders of the trees, the animals and the humans decided that it was now time to inhabit the land above. They decided to send four makers to the surface to prepare it for everyone. These four represented the entirety of the world. 
The leaders gave the four anointed makers a ball of essence called Mirage. They carried Mirage to the surface, where they laid it gently on the ground. Mirage settled on the earth and became a part of it. From this ball, the four makers created the hills and the mountains that we see today. Finally, with dry lands, mountains and water, the upper world was ready. It was time for people to migrate from the lower world. The trees were the first to come out. They walked along the edge of the earth, traveling clockwise. There were different trees, each representing a tribe. All the trees, the willows, junipers, oaks and mesquite, all walked together. When they came to a stream, the willows stopped. We will stay here, they said, for this was a good place for them. They were near the water which they needed to thrive. The remaining trees continued to walk clockwise. They all eventually found their place to stop, a place that was just right for them. The oaks then bore acorns, while the junipers bore berries. The mesquite was the last to stop. It was the animals who came out next and they too started to walk the clockwise path of the trees. They, just like the trees, found their habitats and settled in there. Finally, the humans came out, walking the clockwise path of the trees and the animals. Now, in the beginning, all humans were the same that is, with the same language. As they found their habitats and dropped off, they became different tribes. Each tribe created its own language and its own traditions. This is how the different tribes came to be. The Shirikawas, Mascarellos, Shikarillas, and all the Apaches came from the earth. Back then, the sun was called the killer of enemies, and the moon was the changing woman. They took the lead on this journey because they too were people back then. But eventually, the sun and the moon decided to separate from the humans. We will go ahead of you, they said, but do not worry because we will still lead you each day and night. This is why the sun leads during the day, while the moon leads at night. The Lipans were the very last to stop. Finally, they too had found a place to live. There was plenty of food everywhere, even where there was very little water. They had mountains, deserts and grasslands. This was the right place for them. The next tale is the creation story of the White Mountain or the Western Apaches. They live primarily in Arizona and call themselves the Inde, meaning the people. This is their tale. Four wise and great grandparents began work on the earth. This was before the sun and before the moon. This was before time itself. When they first set up our world, the wind quickly blew it away, 
for the earth was weak and it turned on itself. It was not anchored. Perplexed, the grandparents convened around a big fire. What do we do about this earth? One said. Nothing we create stays. Yes, said the other. Our creation is weak. How do we remedy this? Another answered. We don't know what to do about it. And so, the four conversed and discussed for a long time. After much deliberation, the grandparents found a solution. Let us pull this earth again and stretch it from all four sides, they said. Let us see what happens then. We have tried so many times. What is one more attempt? And so, the four created a new earth and they spread it out in all four directions. The grandparents pulled on each side, thus stretching the land. After this, the earth finally stood upright, but it was still insecure. So they placed four pillars to hold the earth in place. These four pillars are the four directions that we know of and use today. Once this was done, the earth was finally steady. It was able to withstand long winds and whiplashes but it was still soft and jelly-like, for land was soggy and mixed with water. The wise men were happy. They finally made land, a place where they could build their homes. They were too wise to rush into this land, however, and thought it prudent to first test the earth. Thus, the black-winged old man came forth and jumped onto this new earth. It wobbled slightly, but held itself together. The earth was definitely stronger than before. Then came black water old man, who threw himself upon the earth. Thunder rumbled in all four directions. The earth shivered, but was steady under its feet. Finally, the grandparents were satisfied. The earth was steady and strong enough to hold their weight. They then examined the features of their creation. Why is this land so cold? I shiver on this world, said the old man. And so, they sat down again to discuss their options. What is the matter with this earth? they asked. It is too cold for life. They thought and pondered upon this problem. Eventually, Black water old man came up with an ingenious idea. Oh, I know. Let's give this land some hair. That would surely keep it warm. And so, the wise old man began making hairs on earth. They thus made all the grasses, bushes, and trees that grow upon earth. These became the earth's hair. The old men examined their work further. My friends, let us make bones for this world, for without them all is feeble, said the black wind old man. The rest agreed and they made mountains, rocks, and huge boulders, 
features that would hold the earth firmly in place. These are the bones of our world. Finally, they examined the earth again. How will it breathe, this earth? They asked next. Then came forth black thunder, old man, and he gave the earth veins and capillaries in the form of rivers and rivulets. He whipped the earth with a bolt of thunderous lightning. This lightning made water ooze from the depths of the world. They then made the sun, but they placed it too close to the earth and everything got too hot. The old men crawled on the ground and hid under the grasses and bushes. The sun was too close, and the heat was unbearable. They thus pushed the sun farther into the sky. They placed it where the sun is today. They then set the moon into place. Much like the sun, the moon was initially so close to the earth that the night felt like the day. So they moved it back and placed it where we see the moon today. They then made animals and finally humans. The last tale of the episode belongs to the Shirikahua. This tribe is perhaps best known for Geronima and Bonita and their fight against the Europeans. This is their little tongue-in-cheek story of creation. In the beginning, the first people populated the earth. These people were treacherous and vindictive. They fought over petty matters, killing and pillaging for nothing but pleasure. As the first people thrived, Mother Earth died. The great Haxen, the spirit of creation, was not pleased by these first people. So he sent forth a flood, one that caused great havoc and drowned humanity. Well, most of it. Some people and animals, those who were kind and generous, were saved from this deluge. They were forewarned about the flood, and thus they were able to climb the white-ringed mountain before the great deluge. All the animals got to the summit of this mountain. All but the turkey. The bird was the last one to arrive. So late it was that it barely made to the top. It was so close to drowning that its tail dipped in the flood water. This is why the turkey's tail is tipped with white today. Finally, the great Hudson was placated. He was satisfied that evil was routed from the world. The flood was over and the water withdrew. The saved people and animals then descended from the mountain. Something very strange happened then. For the Hudson appeared with a gun and an arrow. The Great Spirit placed the two on the earth and commanded two men to stand before and choose between them. The one who chose first took the gun and became the white man. The one who chose the bow and the arrow became the Apache. That brings us to the end of this episode. The next episode 
is entirely about the Babylonian story of origin. I hope you get to check out their fascinating tale. If you like our work, please subscribe. Why not leave a rating and a feedback? Your words are of immense importance. Goodbye.